Uh, my name is Tony Overwater. I'm the I'm a bass player. I've been in um, uh, in contact with Arab music since I think roughly 18 years. My first tour to the Middle East was with the jazz trio, and uh, there I got really interested in the music, and uh, so interested that I started playing and studying it. And in in my whole search of studying it uh, on the bass and also on, on a little bit on on the oud to to practice. I, I found an enormous universe of beauty, and uh, and this is what is sort of my vision is to share this, and I, <coughs> because I see many people that are really interested, uh, so they really like it, but they don't know um, what it is, and if you don't know anything about the music, it's like with any other music, it's only that much that you can uh, uh, relate to it. So that's why uh, we set up this, and uh, it's my mission also to to tell people about this music and to make them get in contact with them. And then there's, of course, this is only the beginning, but then there's a huge world to uh, discover, hopefully. So, um, Youssef. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, my name is Youssef Beish. I'm a musician, mainly percussionist. I was born in the Galilee, north in Israel, but we are referred to the Palestinian, so we are Palestinians, born in Israel. Uh, in fact, I came from a family that the father actually was a uh, singer, but he was singing more sacred music. But in fact, he didn't like what I'm doing with the instruments, with percussion, for two reasons, because it's noisy for him, and second thing, because he has a specific special attitude towards gypsies. He said that for gypsies, they are not serious in their life. So I love gypsies and I love percussion, so can you imagine the tension? <laughs> for their life, of course, you know, for their freedom anyway. <laughs> so uh, then I continued. I started actually playing uh, first time taken by the eldest brother who used to play percussion for um, a while as a talented boy, five years old, but he took me then with him when I was seven. So I got to wait for two years. And the first time I performed, I was, I was seven years old with a um, local, uh, band of course was wedding and uh, four hours and a half concert or uh, party but a lot of they sing a lot and uh, they, there are many many traditional music they were doing so i was seven years old the first time and uh, imagine i got money more than everybody else because of talented boys so everybody was getting money and congratulating so and since then it just um, it became uh, obsessed it's it's, it's kind of uh, self-expression as well uh, um, therapy for me and recently since 15 years I have been working and teaching actually uh, these conservatories and as well some academies in, in, in Europe for example like in Gothenburg with Ahmed Khatib at the university that I give sometimes master classes long master classes that can be taken as a credit consider credit for the students and uh, somewhere in, in France, of course, and in, in, in Norway, in, uh, here in Holland, in Germany, in, um, in Brazil, uh, everywhere actually. And uh, since 15 years, I'm working on a book which is developing this field from this part of Oriental music, so the rhythms. In the past, it used to, we used to see the only one pattern, one model of rhythm, which is the basic one, the abstract one. And then the other variation and development, it was only kind of self-interpretation uh, of self-contribution by the teacher or by the musician himself. But now it's more uh, more specified and somehow um, will be documented in a big book, which is almost 400 to 500 pages. Uh, it's including all uh, classical rhythms, besides to some rhythms I could construct because you hear it, they exist in our mind, in our ear. And in a way that with whole variations that can uh, develop from that rhythm as well, uh, and there's a big coherence and logic in that. I will explain a little bit later what's the logic of the, um, this kind of book or this kind of approach in, in percussion. Uh, concerning the percussion or rhythms in Oriental music, basically there are three sounds which is naturally come from our talking, which is the low sound, which is called dum, and the higher one, which is tak. It sounds like doom. When you say doom, you hear the sound, actually, when you're talking verbally. 
and tack as well. It, it looks like tack, it sounds like tack. And as well, there's uh, the rest, as we use in music, you know, rests, um, pauses. But besides the doom and tack, while we have two hands using them, and it's not the same strength, not the same pulse, not the same temper of both hands. So this is called tack and this ka, which is comes from the tack itself. Ta, 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 ta. It's, not it's not the same, I'm playing the same strength, the same power, but it's not the same temper because this hand is maybe um, more weak than this, so it gives another touch. And aesthetically it works even much better. So the basic sounds actually is boom and tack and ka, if we use the hand. But if we go back abstractly about the rhythm, the, um, there are few beats, including the rest, that distinguish the rhythm itself, that it cannot be divided. For example, this rhythm, for example, you cannot divide it. It's, for example, here. It's another variation, but it's related actually to this one. And look at my right hand, for example. It's always playing the same pattern, which is the, the basic one. And other things, it's just uh, uh, what I add, it's with the other hand, it's kind of variations that actually refer to the first one. For example, I give another example. One, two, three, four. You see in the right hand, the same pattern remains. So this is important, actually, when you teach uh, the students that, and for the musicians as well when they play with you, that the main pattern, the main pulse, or the main temper, just remaining and somehow static there and appearing there and outstanding. Whatever you add, it is adding, of course, and raising the dynamics and, and enriching everything, but at the same time, <laughs> so um, the first instrument is called Darbuka, and somehow it's very common in, 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 in almost in the world. Mainly it was uh, actually um, famous in Egypt because the, it was used mainly for traditional music and for dancing. Besides to the basic sounds, there is as well like in conga or bongo, uh, like a slap sound. It came to, to replace this. It's used mainly in traditional music, folklore music, or dancing music, such a way of playing. You will never find somebody in classical music playing this way. They will not accept it, actually. So this is the instrument, as I said, Drubake or Darbuka, as it's known in the, in the West, actually, in the world. And of course, I played a little... Um, little uh, rhythms on it but it's also there is more can develop virtuosity in that for example using the all fingers this is a little bit modern actually that using and somehow it's coming uh, influenced by other cultures indian culture or African culture. Uh, there's another way we can use it sometimes, the way I use them as a set, for example, which is. See, such a technique sounds like Indian, although it's not able to play it this way, but somehow with this instrument, I'm trying to, to, to be influenced by other uh, rhythmical phrasing from other cultures, which is developed actually, especially they have their rhythms and their development for their rhythms. So and it's another um, it's full of really beautiful phrasing. <laughs> so this instrument actually it's called the Mandir. Um, it was used in classical um, music, uh, and it's true, in Turkish uh, music, especially uh, Uthman music or uh, some Sufi music, actually, which is full of with us, it was used in different sizes, mainly in Sufi music, but not the classical music like um, of the 
Sufi music it has a, uh, it's, it's a ceremony. It's, they need it because it's low sound and it's very deep sound. So somehow it gives you the feeling and the drive and the, the mood of sacred, you know, sacred music. So as I say, there's the, the dum and the tak. Normally you use kind of the fourth of the, um, if you cut it into a fiddle and then here. But if you use part of the hand, finger, and slowly, and it's just you know, very flexible, you can change the sound, okay? And the tag as well as here. As well, this sound, a slap, but it, it is, it, in this instrument it gives more it's very subtle, it's more round, and it's not like strong like this one. And it's used in the past, uh, they were using it especially in the traditional way of, let's say, uh, uh, folkloristic way. They were using this way. They hit the same place with a thump. This is the traditional way. The classical way or the serious music, you can use finger here. So, and as well as a with, a, with the time, uh, many musicians developed kind of a lot of technique and kind of modern technique, and then use more finger. from that uh, mainly harmonics you know so with this, so with this instrument it's a bit harder in a way than those because you need uh, to do a technique fingering technique for there are three positions for this um, to create a sound and color of this instrument. The first one is the classical, typical to accompany music and without that much ornaments. So it goes this way. The dome is almost here. You cannot get it here. It's with the, the middle finger here. And when you take the tack, you have to close with these fingers. Taka, 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 yeah. So you have to almost to hold it like this, and it's not easy. For beginners, actually, it, just, it begins to hurt, you know, mm -hmm. and you really... So this is when you accompany the singing, um, classical singing, like Um Kultum, or this um, Tarab singing. And uh, sometimes you use this in order to raise the dynamics and to change the color when there is kind of modulation in the music. And for example, you go from minor to major and suddenly when the major come, it's like so, you know, light and, and nice. And then you go with that and it works very well. So we use them as the same technique here to create the taka taka, but it's more, metallic sound of double dissonant and we and here we use the second color which is when it's open like this you use this then the whole sounds open even when you hear it's these resonating and the, the color changing this is like the closed sound like this and it's very when you play like one hour like this it's still acceptable but like this it's a bit um, so in the classical way serious music they use this thing you still have the rhythm and it's very light and nice and uh, still doing his job but it's not so heavy in the, in the ear here you use it sometimes in order to, as I said, to raise the dynamics and to change the color. But in, in traditional music, like folkloristic, they always use it like this. It's 
energy all the time and, and groove. Uh, the third uh, color, it's, which is mixed between both, instead of closing with both fingers here, if you close only with one, then you have the option to get this and at the same time to have it's between. It's between. So. And as well, you have like the slap there. You have it like this here. Or. Thank you. 